Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and without further ado, let's jump right into it. Over $100 million worth of the second largest digital currency by market cap, Ethereum. $100 million worth of Ethereum have been burned since the cryptocurrency's network transitioned from a proof-of-work consensus algorithm into a proof-of-stake consensus algorithm. The cryptocurrency's deflationary trend has been growing over time, with its supply dropping by 64,457 ETH since the network's merge upgraded over, wow, over 180 days ago. It doesn't, I, I actually have no idea how long that it feels. It just doesn't feel like 180 days. <clears throat> to the point that there are now 120,456 ethers circulating on the market. Wait, that can't be real. That can't be the actual number. I think there may be missing some digits there because if there were only if there were only 120,000 ether left on the market, we'd have like a a $48,000 ether. Some they they they're missing some digits there. According to data from Ultrasound Money, Ethereum supply has been dropping by 0.1% per year since the merge. I think it's even more than that. Uh, while without it, it would have been rising at 3.4% per year. So Ethereum originally did not ever have halvings like Bitcoin did. So, you know, Bitcoin's uh, reward is 100 Bitcoin, then it's 50, then it's 25, then it's 12.5, then it's blah, 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 blah. You kind of get the idea. <clears throat> I think from the get-go, Ethereum had, I think the original issuance rate, I think, was 25 coins per block. I think that's what it was. And then basically, it was like a developer call years ago. And this is how they kind of uh, bring the, or brought previously, uh, the actual uh, inflation rate of it down. Because I remember at some point, it was also, wasn't it like 12 Ether or something? Then it got brought down to 5 and then the merge happens, so this is where we currently are right now. So normally, the inflation rate of Ethereum would be 3.4%, but now it's actually uh, deflationary. There's a chart right here. It's one that I put on Twitter just a couple of days ago. So yeah, absolutely monumental. The point of the merge was to make the coin deflationary. We are supposed to see more and more Ether burned over time. Uh, the significance being is that this is happening while prices are low. So the idea is when we begin to eventually see sometime in the future a 10x on network activity and more Ether is being burned, the more that's happening on the network, the more Ether gets burned, the more Ether gets burned, the idea would be that Ethereum's price would also rise as well as there's less of it on the market and also people locking up their Ether to be able to uh, stake it and also get the staking rewards and burn extra coins and you kind of get the idea. So yeah, cool. It's nice to see that it worked. I hope that this actually does something to Ethereum's price, but I, I still, you know, just logically, I, I think we're in this really weird crossroads right now within uh, the macroeconomic view of where everything's going to be going, the constant uh, question marks that we're all seeing all the time, and until anything is actually, like, solidified and really concrete for us, I think we're just going to be, you know, just wondering uh, how high coins are going to go or what could be happening Next, that's the Ethereum is officially Lear deflationary once again news. And yeah, let's move on. Now, grain of salt here, because this is also one of the most popular news stories that we've ever, ever had. U.S.-based crypto exchange Coinbase is considering setting up a crypto trading platform overseas, and is discussing the move with institutional clients. Bloomberg has reported, citing people familiar with the plans. If you've been paying attention to anything happening in the cryptocurrency space company-wise over the last three years, I would say that this was evident that this was going to happen. But not really. A lot of cryptocurrency companies... 90% of them within the United States have this really weird idea or believed that uh, them, them, like as in Coinbase, 
being in the United States would be such a positive for the economy and or for regulators that they would simply be given a golden spoon and kind of have free reign to do whatever they want. And it, the, the opposite of that has taken place. And this is mainly from Coinbase and mainly from Gemini, who for years, I can only imagine what the closed door discussions were like, can only imagine, where they were basically, uh, what do you call it? Trying to be friends with the regulators in some sort of way to give them nicer regulations. But every crypto exchange has gotten in trouble over the course of the last two years for whatever reason. Whether they did or did not do what they are accused of. I mentioned years ago that Ripple should have left the United States. Just completely obvious. And this was even before we had the actual lawsuit against them. That's why this year, when Ripple announced, or even the end of last year, that they have all these new partners around the world. They're opening up shop in Asia. They're trying to do this in the Middle East. They have, uh, uh, you know, uh, aspirations of opening up offices in Africa. Blah, 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 you name all these other places. Cool. It makes a lot of sense. Because the United States is not the only place on the planet. <clears throat> why am I saying all of this? Because Coinbase has desperately... <clears throat> along with many other companies, uh, been trying to gain favor from regulators who don't like them, from banks who don't like them, from institutions who would rather that we not exist. They don't want crypto to be a thing because it ruins the idea of what the U.S. dollar is or how strong the U.S. dollar is or, or that people should only be using the U.S. banking system as opposed to circumventing it and also using Coinbase or Kraken or Gemini and then giving them the fees that would normally be going to the banks. So, on top of all of this news that these companies have finally realized, finally, after 9,000 years, uh, that the government doesn't care about them, this is why this news was released. Apparently, people behind the scenes who are familiar, wink, with what's going on are reporting that Coinbase is, and I saw a lot of websites announcing that Coinbase was leaving the states, they they would never And I have so much more that I would like to say on that, but I will not. They would never, regardless of how their, how ridiculous their relationship is with everything. They would never. However, this is why I mentioned before, I was like, hey, it's kind of cool that Ripple has like 20 new partnerships in Mexico and in Thailand and in the Philippines and in Japan and all these other places. I was like, why, why aren't Coinbase and Gemini and other crypto exchanges doing the exact same thing. Why are they constantly so focused? Like how much more money they would have made? How much any like regulatory issues with the SEC would have been like, okay, well that sucks. Well, good thing we have 19 other offices around the world who actually, all these other countries have already given cryptocurrency regulations. They know what the, we, we, we know you can find online. We know what the regulations are in every other country. But anyway, It says a decision hasn't been taken on the location for such a trading platform because they're probably in talks and trying to figure out exactly where they should go. I assume that they're going to aim for Ireland. If they do Ireland, they're in the EU. With the EU, they're then, you know, allowed to do the other countries within the United States. I assume they're trying to target Asia in some sort of way, but they're figuring out a position that they can actually go to that would be able to land them in one spot and kind of have a blanket over everything else. So I assume they're aiming for the UAE. That's just completely obvious. There's far too much money there for them to ignore it. I would assume for Asia, they're probably aiming for Hong Kong. But Hong Kong is going to have some issues in the next 15 to 20 years as they are subsequently uh, reabsorbed by the North. Uh, Where else could they go? Probably, I would say Japan, but that's probably, no, I I think Hong Kong would be an easier choice for them. So it's not that a decision hasn't been taken. They're probably trying to figure out which one is most tax beneficial to them and where they could get the easiest paperwork done to kind of get the ball rolling. It says, which comes as U.S. regulators are cracking down on crypto. It's not so much as of, of, of a crackdown as much of it like a psychotic obsession that these regulators are having because they, they understand that they're no longer actually needed. That's not me raising my fist in the, in the sky and going, crypto! It's, it's more of a no. It's just when you have automation, when you have everything online, the idea of a regulator, the idea of an accountant 
or someone doing your taxes for you. We have websites, we have AI, we have all these things that do it for us. Why ask what something is when you can go search online to see what it is? This is why every single time that the SEC comes forward saying that they uh, believe that something is a security or this is a security and people keep looking at the law and they go, that's not that's not at all what's going on. When you have members of the SEC, people who work inside that same office as Gary Gensler coming forward and going, that none of this, no, that's not w what it is. That's because they're probably also looking online for the laws and stuff as well, unless they have it in their head, regardless of what's actually going on. So the regulators are trying to figure, a, figure, a, figure out something to be able to regulate so that they can simply say, well, now this new system of crypto, you know, we have to find, we have to regulate it in some sort of way so that we continue to be relevant when the blockchain essentially would regulate itself. Regulatory action against the sector intensified after November's collapse of crypto exchange FTX. The recent shutdown of Silvergate Bank, Signature Bank, and Silicon Valley Bank, which were all in some way tied to crypto, alerted lawmakers even more. They weren't al alerted. They, they knew exactly what's going on. You'd be shocked to figure out how many people in Congress and in the Senate also have crypto. They know what's going on. It's just a matter of when their money is messed with. That's when the alarm is sounded. It's only they don't care about anything else. When, when we found out how many of how many politicians, I don't care left or right, had money in FTX, were working with FTX, gave money to FTX. Do you think that FTX was the only crypto exchange? Do you think that every U.S. senator, every Congress person, every person uh, working in parliament around the world and other governments that they don't also have money in some sort of way in Kraken, in Coinbase, in Gemini, in Binance? You think FTX was the... Oh, oh, FTX collapsed. I can't have my money in crypto anywhere else anymore. The alarm goes off when their money is messed with. Why do you think when when the first bank that was going down, it wasn't... Was it Silvergate? I think Silver Silvergate, I, I think, was the most crypto-y. There was barely any news. It was only within the, the, the cryptocurrency space. When Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank went off, that spread the panic. Because the lawmakers and the people who have all the money, that's where their money was. They don't care about your money. They don't care about you at any, any step of the way. Never forget that. If you remember one thing from this channel... The wealthy and the elite do not care about you or your family at all. I know that sounds harsh, but look at the way that the world is run. It says Coinbase isn't alone. Several other U.S. crypto firms are looking to find new banking partners in other jurisdictions. Signum in Switzerland and Bank Frick, that is a weird name, in Liechtenstein, told Coindesk they re received an increasing number of requests to open accounts from offshore companies including those based in the United States. Just just do it. I, you, like Everyone was so obsessed in thinking that the U.S. was going to favor them in some sort of way. If you've never seen that video, I want to say 2012, 2013, 2014. Can't give you an exact month, but look up those times when the, uh, what is it called? The, the weird New York law, uh, the bit license, the bit license. Look up bit license, Winklevoss twins. There's a video of it. Where the Winklevoss twins are barely like sitting, they're, they're, they're sitting in the front row as the deliberations are going on for a bit license. And you can tell how happy they are because they were one of the, the people who put forth the idea of like added regulations within New York. Because the, the idea normally is if you're the teacher's pet and she sees that you're the teacher's pet, you will never get in trouble. So why would there ever, you know, you make sure that you are constantly groveling at their feet so that they know you're always there with them. Until they turn on you and then this ends up happening. Very popular news. Coinbase, it says, is Coinbase moving abroad? Firm begins talks to launch platform overseas. Good job. You you finally got there after six months of being stepped on. How do you, how does it feel? Do, do, do you feel more like a person now? Do you have more self-respect? Coinbase will never leave the United States. They are always going to have a presence there because they're far too terrified of the teacher coming over to them finally and patting them on the head and saying, you did a good job. Coinbase reportedly plans on opening new crypto trading platform overseas. Just do it. Just do it. Like no one's, no one's, no one's going to be shocked if you do. 
it it won't be like, oh my, can you believe? No, 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 no. Like, it, it seems sad that you even waited this long. You should have had around five other, at least five other locations around the world. There should be a Coinbase EU. There should be a Coinbase Asia. There should be a Coinbase Africa. That's the Coinbase is reportedly. What? That's crazy. I, I, I don't think they would ever be able to do that news. Like, are people learning? Like, is, is it finally time? Like, do we need a, we need a banking collapse and regulators to literally, I won't say the phrase, for these companies to be like, maybe, should, should we finally go maybe somewhere else? Anyway, good job, Coinbase. You finally got there. Only took you almost a decade. Let's move on. Also in this was incredibly popular news, the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, has denied reports that prospective buyers of Signature Bank would have to stop doing business with crypto. This rumor spread like wildfire, rapidly. There was news that any company who is currently trying to acquire a bank that has failed <clears throat> can have no ties to crypto whatsoever. And if they do, they must then give up their cryptocurrency business and just essentially uh, become a bank. The FDIC responded to a Reuters report citing two anonymous sources who claimed <clears throat> that the buyers of Signature Bank would have to agree to give up all crypto businesses at the bank. Following publication, a spokesperson for the FDIC told the news service that it would not require divestment of crypto activities as part of any sale, pointing to previous comments from Chairman Martin Grunberg that the FDIC is not looking to prohibit any particular activity by banks. This was, you don't understand. People lost their minds when this news came out. And I find it even, we live in a time where there's very little due diligence by individuals who work for news corporations who have university degrees. I feel like putting out, like from Reuters, putting out news like that, you would assume that whoever posted that would have like checked, then checked, then re re rechecked their sources before releasing news and or information like that. But I think we live in a time period where you've seen it. A lot of these news networks, they want you to pay like $5 a month, $129 per year. And it's like, no, I'll get my news from somewhere else. So I guess in a world uh, where on these websites, news is essentially free. This is just what's going on. It says, buyers of Signature Bank told to give up crypto business by FDIC. People lost their minds. Uh, as it turns out, this apparently is not true. But I do understand why people would have believed this in the first place. Because it sounds like something that the FDIC or the Fed or a government would have told a company to do, especially as we see larger institutions and more banks continuing their foray into the cryptocurrency space. So yeah, this apparently was false. Good job, Reuters. Between Reuters and the Wall Street Journal, you know, I think just, you know, a, a, a rotten cherry on top of the, of, of the old dirty cake as far as like them just kind of like the Wall Street Journal has become quite uh, popular recently for just releasing like nonsensical news about the cryptocurrency space. Tether's fake. Binance is fake. This crypto. And it's like, wh where, where are you guys getting your, oh, you have no sources. Oh, well that makes a lot of sense. That's the buyers of, uh, banks in the U S apparently will not have to give up their cryptocurrency businesses news. And yeah, Let's move on. Also in the news, Thailand's government has said that companies that issue that issue or create digital tokens will receive a waiver that exempts them from paying corporate tax and VAT 
known as value added tax. According to a report, the Thai government anticipates losing just over $1 billion in tax revenue as a result of the waiver. No, 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 that's not how, that's not how that ever works. If you ever hear a bank or a government or a company or a corporation announce that they're doing something, launching something, creating something, allowing something to happen, and then they make a sad face and go, yeah, but we're going to lose over a billion dollars from it. No, 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 no. They lose money from the corporate tax and the VAT from that company. The idea is you lure millionaires and billionaires to your borders to say, hey, your company pays no taxes. But they know that these people with this money will spend the extra money that they saved in the country. That's what happens in in other places like Dubai that have a a 0% income tax rate. If you look at the the numbers and stuff like that or ever watch a documentary of people who live there, they say, you know, the extra money that I saved at the end of the year, I bought a flat with that or I bought a house, I bought a home. Well, guess what? The taxes on that, the monthly taxes and the yearly taxes and the and the uh, property taxes and the, the water, the tax bill and all these other things, a portion of that then goes to the government. That's how they make up, wink, that $1 billion in wink losses. There will be no losses. They would not be doing something like this. It's an effort to try and get as much money to come to their uh, land, essentially, as possible. This is how it always ends up working. Or in other really rich, wealthy countries, when they have a 0% tax, you'll notice that the VAT or the like actual tax on certain items is usually, so like, you know, on an apple or a bottle of water uh, will be 12 to 19%. That's how they make the extra taxes back. Thailand-based companies that issue digital tokens for investments are set to receive a corporate and value-added tax waiver. The Thai government reportedly said, as a result of the waiver, the Thai government, which is projecting investment token offerings worth $3.71 billion over the next two years, said it expects to lose more than $1 billion in tax revenue. So... This is just a continuation of all the uh, places around the world who are trying to figure out how to get people to put money into their countries and their companies because they realized that a couple of years ago all the nonsense that they were saying and telling people that no one should be getting into crypto. Now they're desperate for the people to get into crypto. Why? Because you have companies like Fidelity and BlackRock actively getting into the cryptocurrency space. So they know that the big money is there. They know what's happening behind the scenes. They know that people are, especially in their governments, are pushing tons of money into crypto. But all those things that they told everyone, not Thailand in particular, it's more of a, a global thing. They all, these, these, these people kept on telling other people and their citizens and everybody else not to get into crypto. And they had very unfavorable laws. And now they're like, no, 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 come here, money, money, money. And it's like, why would I want to do business there when I know for a fact that this country that I've been in for the last five years definitely has 0% taxes, definitely is going to be helping me in my country. And there's no risk of us going there and being like, oh, I hope we don't get shut down tomorrow. Once again, this is not directed towards Thailand. It's more of a, other countries that have done this kind of thing over the last couple of years. That's the cool. Another country is trying to get some money to their borders. I hope it works out for them because, you know, you you should have been a fan back in 2017. Don't don't pop up in 2023 talking about, you know, we've always been friends. You you should have helped me before. News. All right. Let's move on. Also in I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, explicitly. I will believe this if it actually ends up happening. EOS Network Ventures has committed $20 million in capital to develop applications and gaming products on the EOS Network after April's Ethereum Virtual Machine EVM launch. For those of you who missed the news a couple of days ago, in a spectacularly ironic turn of events... Uh, EOS um, is apparently going to be integrating the Ethereum virtual machine, which will allow developers and other people who want to simply use it, uh, Ethereum, to be able to do activities on top of EOS. It's usually one of the things that every blockchain ends up doing. They announce that they are stronger or quicker or faster than Ethereum. People don't end up using it. In EOS's case, is a very specific reason why 
And then they end up integrating the thing that they said that they were going to be destroying. And the reason why EOS is doing this in, in their in their case is quite uh, significant is because the creators of EOS uh, received four billion with a B four billion dollars um, for their ICO and did absolutely nothing with the coin. Jack Diddley squat. So I think EOS would have actually been one of the top ten coins. Uh, if the creators hadn't been so greedy and left, we could have had a, a major platform. So now, EOS Network Ventures has announced that they're going to be throwing $20 million at developers of applications and games. Why? Because they're still kind of in 2021. The idea, oh no, 2020 as well. The idea long, long ago was that the, the main thing that would catapult cryptocurrencies into the mainstream was games. People, for some reason, believe that games played by people would be the end all for people with you know wanting to integrate or use blockchain and all this other stuff. But <clears throat> in a similar move to many other companies, same as Ripple and Ripple X and all these other companies building stuff on top of the XRP ledger, uh, you pay developers to basically make applications or apps, if you will. Uh, and eventually, at some point, one of them will stick. So a lot of people think, like, when you hear sometimes that, you know, there's like a, it is a billion dollar app, or this app is worth $800 million, people tend to think that, it's, it's the same exact thing with success. People think that success happens overnight. They don't realize it is a, it is one of, the, it, it's, it's terrible. It takes like seven, eight years to finally get where you want to be, and then things are actually, you know, really good. It's the same exact thing with building apps. A company will sometimes put out, 50, 60, 70 apps over the course of a year, none of them stick. Over the course of making 200 apps, one of them finally makes it. The company ends up making it into the news and everyone goes, wow, look at, wow. You know, I wish I could do the same. It takes a long time to, to rise up in the pyramid of life, if you will. EOS Network Ventures is making a formal commitment to invest $20 million directly into the EOS Ethereum Virtual Machine and Game 5 projects. EOS Foundation CEO Yves LaRose, fancy name, tweeted early on Monday. It says, EOS Virtual Machine will also have the most funding available for builders. He opt-end with $20 million up for grabs for Ethereum Virtual Machine projects. We expect an influx of massive, oh, wait, massive influx, there we go, of developers who want to take advantage of the funding opportunities, adding the commitment was made to attract developers and builders to the EOS blockchain in the coming months. I hope it works out. I sincerely do. I I, I think Yves LaRose is now the new uh, head of EOS, if you will. He's a name that keeps popping up over and over again. I think the original developers have been more or less shunned, from what I can tell. I think they had a couple, a large chunk of money, and I think the community of the EOS community actually voted to lock up their money and, you know, consensus, what have you, you know, voting rights and all that other stuff. So um, it would be great if EOS actually uh, did something because, you know, uh, $4 billion is a lot. But uh, this seems like a, you know, a, a last chance ploy effort. I still think EOS can do extremely well. Especially with, listen, EOS to date uh, has not broken down like Solana or many other chains over the course of the last couple of years. It is clearly still usable. It's just a matter of you need a couple thousand apps. I assume the 2.0 to this is going to be when we get an announcement that they're making an NFT platform or you can mint NFTs on there. What's the other one? You can already have ICOs and STOs. And then you have the Ethereum virtual machine. There's like something else, like this, some other letter combination thing that was also like very popular. So when EOS has all of those things, it's just more of a, uh, you need to market it properly to be able to get people to use your actual uh, coin platform thingamajig. So hope it works out, guys. You know, long time coming. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, American Crypto Academy, 
Martin Steuer, Bodie McBoatface, Sam Ratter, Dotha, Diddy, Manny, Cryptos, Crypto, Gambino, Auspicious, Agile, and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, and let's move on, Empire Queen, Roman, Geba, Bitcoin, Ben. I don't know, I have to have Bitcoin Ben written in all caps on my phone and I don't know why. Arachno Dave, the dealers then, Captain Summing in the Z-Way, Lay, Mo Barazzi, VB Nerd 21, Lauren De Silva quoted Biddy, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Paternoster. Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moon Man High, XRP, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Anima Rita, Ebiliophobia, Adam Grace, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Setsuna, Paxis, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Anytime Fitness, Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigera, Macho Nisa, and on Crypto with Lionel. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who left a like, a comment, or has subscribed. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.